and welcome to another episode of Heal Yourself with me, Sarah Dawkins. We're the podcast that shares people sharing their own healing journey from conditions that doctors say that we can't. And interestingly, today we have a family doctor. It's Christian Partridge, who is based in East Anglia in the UK. And as the stress of the medical job took hold, taking Christian to hospital twice with heart arrhythmias, he reduced his medical hours to pursue his love of photography. And while still working as a doctor, Christian went back to school, obtaining a first class honours degree, and his dissertation reviewed the benefits of therapeutic photography in treating mental illness. Christian also discovered self-healing through his own processes of long exposure photography, which he uses to de-stress from the rigours of daily life. I'd like to introduce Christian. Welcome. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. It's, uh, it's lovely to be here. It's great to have you on. I think you're my first doctor. Thank you. <laughs> so would you like to share your healing with the listeners so they can understand where you've come from and, and how you've got to where you are now? Yes, certainly. Um, so a journey, as you mentioned at the start, that's uh, being triggered by the stresses of being a, a family doctor in the UK um, that has become increasingly pressured at, over the past few years. So I've had the two two episodes where I've ended up in, in the hospital with the heart arrhythmia, but actually it goes back a little bit before that. And I had been um, going through a particularly stressful um, complaint at work things not going so well at home uh, and actually got put on uh, medication for what was mainly anxiety but actually it was all stress related. Um, I'd already started my photographic journey at this point um, but it, it was much more of a hobby. Um, I certainly hadn't at that point gone back to, to learning um, so medication didn't really help very much, I have to say. And I think um, looking back now and some of the information that's, that's coming through now is that, uh, that those drugs perhaps should be saved for those with more severe issues. Um, they don't necessarily do an awful lot. There isn't a great deal of evidence. Um, and there are a great deal of side effects and obviously it's it's quite difficult to come off them so i'd always enjoyed the photography and i decided that that was my way out really my escape and i love being outside uh, i certainly love being on the coast and so it it's sort of landscape and coastal photography that I have used to de-stress and reduce those anxieties. Um, it's something for me that works, particularly when I go into doing the long exposures, um, where you basically are slowing down. You, you, you're making yourself slow down and, um, you, you know, we're talking about exposures that are minutes that have to be timed um, as the camera can't time it for you. Um, and you you become much more aware of your own surroundings. And I, th I think I can relate to three different phases within that. So the first one actually is is, is a real clarity of thinking. It's, it's almost... Um, have, have your pen and notebook handy because you can start to declutter all the all the noise and you can start to prioritize you've got other things to do um, I'm gonna do it this way you can start to plan and then the second phase is this um, complete awareness of the now your your immediate surroundings what's going on um, now, I was out at on the coast a few days ago and you're just suddenly aware of the seabirds, the noises, the patterns in the clouds, 
where those patterns are changing if it's been particularly windy. Um, now that you've got the sound of the water, the, of the tide was coming in for this shoot. Um, and you start to notice, as a, as a photographer, you start to notice, well, there's a subject there. Um, I can work on that in a minute. There's a subject there. What's going on over here? Um, you're just watching where you are. And suddenly, you are there in the present. And all the, the noise of everyday life has gone away. And then when you get to that point, I think you then you hit this relaxation and it is it is very much a mindfulness process that you you're going through um and consequently actually the the, the notice that the um my my pictures improve over that time so obviously i'm trying to produce something as a as an artist but actually at that point my mind is so focused that i'm getting better and better images i'm sort of fine tuning what's going on here or oh, i'd like a bit of that or well, i'm just going to wait for that cloud to come over um so yes you, you you slow down you become solely focused on what's in the present and everything else goes away and it is so much more effective than any medication I would say, I think, you know, to, to sit in my usual day job and to be able to say that. Um, and of course, one of the, the, the great things about it is you can do this yourself. You don't need help. You don't need a therapist to be there. You can go out. You don't actually, in theory, need an expensive camera. This is something that can be done quite simply on 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 your smartphone which is something that i will well i've started to look into a bit further and try to write about is is you know these these digital devices that are in our pockets that we're often slaves to can actually be used in a way that really can help us um so that that is another aspect that is now something that i'm writing about and developing as a project which which differs from the true essence of therapeutic photography which is where you are using asking people to in small groups with a defined aim and objective of taking pictures or certainly in, in i sometimes tend to use the word making pictures um that represent a feeling a task you know take a photo of something that represents how you're feeling right now and take one of where you would like to be um so therapeutic photography in that sense is often a small group with a facilitator with a defined aim and objective. And again, doesn't need uh, necessarily a trained therapist, but somebody with life experience and somebody who's willing to, to listen and empathize and direct. So that's, that's true therapeutic photography. Now, I work in the health service where mental health services are uh, very restricted and difficult to access um, amongst other things that are difficult to access and certainly looking forward group consultations as a whole is something that has starting to to take a hold in the uk and here is something where a small group could actually do some therapeutic photography over a period of a couple of hours where a therapist might have seen one or two patients you could have a group of six seven eight and you're reducing a strain on the health service in effect um 
but I think for me the how that would work in practice I, I don't know that that our health service is that open to that that sort of thing really um, and it is something that as I said anyone can do um, with with the therapeutic photography it's about how you want the what the re image represents so it doesn't have to be technically a, a good photograph so there again something that a, a smartphone could easily be used for um, and I think it's it's something there that um, you know that we all have access to very easily it's in our pockets um, all the time whether it's switched on or switched off um, so that's that's where I've started and now taking I'm starting to use my phone a little bit more um, even with the, the the more professional camera setup and then and then trying to I almost use that as my range finder but that's that's the one where I then post this is where I am today or this is where I've been um, until I've processed the the ones off the big camera sounds amazing can I just take you back for a bit of clarity though you talk yeah, about um, long exposure could you mm -hmm. explain what that means so um, it's something that takes me back I suppose to to when we used film um, so to set up for long exposures you 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 need a camera on a tripod with a remote cable release um, because you are you are taking pictures with exposures of from say half a second to, to several minutes now some cameras will well, most cameras would time up to 30 seconds of exposure um, but beyond that you're shooting on a setting called bulb mode which is where you are timing the um, exposure yourself um, so you and you are pre-focusing a, a picture because you're using then filters that effectively block out daylight in order to make the, the exposure longer and once those so i i do this this all has to be done on camera not on a computer this is all out in the field so once you've put those filters in place you can't actually see anything yourself through the camera that is black um and one of the filter manufacturers you you get a guide of roughly how long to leave the setting dependent on what the time on the camera said before you put that filter in and then you pretty much experiment from there so you see the end result on the camera screen and you you then adjust your timing to whether you want it a bit lighter or a bit darker dependent on the mood that you're trying to create and it almost takes me back to the days when you shot on 35 millimeter film or any film where you couldn't actually see what you had taken until it had been developed um, and I think that's where where the slowing down comes from when when you shot on film you wanted to make sure that you'd got everything right because it was quite expensive to buy and then process unless you had your own dark room um, and you wanted to make sure everything was absolutely right on that piece of film whereas obviously in the digital age we can the, the the photo appears immediately and you can delete it immediately and start again so you have still got that aspect that if you don't like what's on the screen you can delete it and take another one or you can keep it and and, and adjust from it but yes yeah, so long exposures for me uh, are usually in the realms of three, four, five minutes. Wow. 
Um, and at and that time, are you, are you're almost one with the camera. Yes. Just like you said, yeah. totally mindful of yeah. everything that's going around you. Um, to be there to capture that shot. Um, yes. and, and mindfulness yeah. really is just being at one with, with your senses in that present moment, isn't it? Taking it all in, whether it's visually, auditory, sensory, through mm -hmm. touch and feel. But it is literally stopping your mind from going into the future or back into the past to be in that moment. Yes, and, th and that's where the relaxation and the enjoyment comes from it because also i might be out at times of the day that your listeners might still be in bed so i will get up and prepare for a sunrise for example Beautiful. which at this time of the year <laughs> in in the uk is is quite pleasant because it's it's yes. uh, not that early in the morning but um being on the east coast um uh, getting up in the summer for sunrises uh, are literally not going to bed. Yes, challenging. So, uh, it is very challenging. So in, in those cases, I will have done some pre-planning of where I'm going and um, where, the, where the sun is going to be rising from and where it is going. And I want, I want to be there and see, sort of almost get into that um, mindfulness zone as the sun is coming up because that, um, sorry but that's 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 the sort of the preparation so you, you're metering shots it's effectively the same as going out to play sport you have to warm up and yes. when you, you you warm up your eye to the to the to your surroundings and and the act of being outside as well is so beneficial to health but actually yeah. watching a sunrise as well, it, it uh, affects our circadian mm -hmm. rhythms, doesn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. And it helps to ground us. And it, it basically tells our brain that, oh, look, the sun's rising, so it's daytime, so I'm mm -hmm. not going to be as tired because I'm watching the sun mm -hmm. come up um, and I'm going to be more awake. Um, and it's such a beautiful thing to watch is a sunrise. It's so sunrise or sunset. It, it, for yeah. me, it nourishes my soul. Yes, I think uh, that uh, this trigger of your your body's cortisol is going to to go up. You're going to be awake. You're going to be sharper, um, ready ready for the day. And actually, it's it's interesting because it it can be, as I said, very early in the morning. But it's it, it's strange how the tiredness very quickly ebbs away as soon as you see that sun tr starting to peer above the above the horizon yeah and, and there's there's medicine in inverted commas in watching the sunrise yeah. as, it, as we see it um in the infrared um frequency um, yeah. because we, yeah. we can look at the sun when it's red but not once it's turned orange and then yellow well, then, well it yeah. used to be yellow didn't it the sun in our <laughs> childhood and now it's white <laughs> Um, but I mean, but that in itself is so health giving as well, and so so uplifting of the mood just to mm -hmm. watch that and know that that new day's dawned. Yes, yes, and th and there are so many things that you you can notice um, once you're in that um, phase, of, and, and just little things. Um, I was out photographing a, a beach a, f a few months ago. It was still quite warm. Um, it was an evening shoot actually on an east facing coast, which isn't, uh, you, you don't get the spectacular sunsets here that you do elsewhere, but you, you're in that zone, you start noticing little details that some of the, the flowers are still out. And I'd found these, um, their winding gears that wind the boats back up onto the shore, and inside, tiny little yellow flowers just growing through the rusted holes in the bottom of this old winding gear and it's it, you know it's to see also to see that new life coming through something that's worn away that yeah. nature will take back over again is always quite amazing but and and until you're in that place with you're in the now you 
don't notice these things. It's only when you're no. there that you 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 can see this unfolding in front of you. Um, Beautiful. It is. I think so. Um, it is stunning. And can I take you also to, you mentioned about the, the group therapy. Um, yeah. Um, I would think that would be highly beneficial, not only because you're, you've got, you know, people taking pictures of how they're mm -hmm. feeling now and how they want to feel, but in that group setting, it shows them that they're not alone as well, mm -hmm. that they've got the support of other people. Um, and one of the healers from my book went to a support group when she was suffering with depression. And she said it, it was so empowering to mm -hmm. know that those people were there, all feeling the same, all trying to express themselves and maybe not having the right words or can't, can't find the emotions mm -hmm. because they're so devoid. And to see other people in that scenario as well is so helpful. And as you've said, if the NHS can do this and put people together, you're seeing however many as a group together rather than one at a time. So it's making better use of the time. Mm -hmm. And it's also introducing people to each other to support each other. Yeah, yeah, it's that shared experience. And then there would be the peer support that grows from that and possibly yeah. you know, new friendships that would yes. forge as a result. And you know, if we're talking about treating something like loneliness, yeah. there is a perfect solution, which I think at the moment um, it's it's loneliness and social isolation that yeah. have caused such um, a problem uh, amongst certainly in the UK and and as as lockdowns have had their reduction of the physical illness, unfortunately, they have accelerated the mental illness and i think here is something you know that we could use we're, we're already doing similar things you know we have pulmonary rehabilitation for people with lung disease we have cardiac rehabilitation for people yes. with heart problems which are group sessions and here is something that is very very simple very very cheap um, and does not require that therapist input and could potentially help um, so many people. Yeah. And just uh, the fact of the, the people who are coming that are suffering, knowing that somebody is there taking, leading yes. that session and they will listen mm -hmm. because so many people just need to feel heard, don't they? Yes. Um, for yes. their own healing. And sometimes that's all they need. It's just to feel yeah. hurt. So the, the, the biggest group of people that I'm seeing that are particularly affected are actually teenagers and young adults. And so these are the people who are going to have the technology in their hands and know how to use it. And with a bit yeah. of direction, could be using something that is really, really quite helpful. Uh, yes. Yeah, and like I say, so simple. Um, so simple. Virtually, yeah. virtually everybody's got one. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Could you share one tip that somebody could take away with them from today in their own healing journey, something that, that you've learned that's very simple? I think the, the biggest thing for me was probably the epiphany moments of ending up back in the coronary care unit where I used to work um, is actually making the time in your diary to have time out to do this and I hear people talking about willpower it's not willpower it's the discipline it's self-discipline I am going to invest in myself and I am going to invest this time that I need yeah. to 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 be and feel a better person as a result and I think that's the the, the biggest thing make the time set aside the time and do it yeah because it's a form of self-care isn't yeah. it 
Yes. And, you know, by scheduling the, the time, and you're saying, actually, during this time, I'm putting myself first. Yes. So it's, yeah. it's a choice. It's not a punishment. No, no, no. It's something. I mean, I don't, I go out, I don't always immediately feel that I'm in photography mood or photography yeah. mode. But it's something that, you know, once I've got the camera out and taken a couple of warm up shots, if for want of a better term, then it then it comes through and, and you've I feel so much calmer um, and relaxed once I've been out. And the one thing the one other thing I will say about it is actually with the long exposures, you are concentrating, you are you are aware of this there is a fatigue element involved as well the same as if you'd been to the gym and 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 done lots of exercise so you you will fatigue over time but i can be out on a shoot for two three four hours quite easily um and, and i will come home shattered but i will come home feeling much more relaxed and much calmer because yeah. I've been out, yeah. And it's a different kind of shattered, though, isn't it? It it's is. Like an enjoyable shattered because yes. you know you've done things that you've really enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. You come home. Yeah, there's a contentment with it. Yes, definitely. Oh, that's wonderful! Thank you so much for sharing all of that, Christian. And um, where can people find you? So, um, my website uh, is www.cjpimages.co.uk, and you can also find me on Instagram as at Christian Partridge, and at CJP Images on Facebook should take you to my photography page there. And uh, don't forget the two A's in Christian. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, thank you for your time, Christian. I really right. appreciate you. Hopefully, people will look at photography through new eyes now. I hope so. It's uh, as I say, we can help so many people, and it's the power is in in your pocket. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah.